Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The San Antonio Hotel housekeepers find two bodies during their cleaning routine. What investigators are saying about the incident this morning. Fury and fear were on full display at a school board meeting in Newport News, Virginia overnight. We're going to show you what happened at the first public meeting with school leaders since police say a six-year-old boy shot his teacher earlier this month. In trouble now. Johnson for three. Get out of here, Calvin! <laughs> And after what seems like 50 games, the Spurs are back in the win column this morning. We'll hear from Kelvin Johnson, who had a record night last night against the Brooklyn Nets. Awesome news. Taking a look out there with a live cam, 68 degrees. Yeah, a little humid this morning. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is January 18th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I stepped outside and I felt that immediately. I was like, oh, is it summertime? Right. I grabbed a rain jacket, but that was just a hunch. I did see some mist coming in this morning. You see any on your commute? Not, not for mine. Not you. Well, There's Mike, mist. I, I haven't seen any yet. Okay. Yeah. So a little but bit. I, but again, remember, far north Bear County, yeah. I get up there in the hills of Stone Oak and, and and right now it's too late to be picked up on radar. Haven't mm -hmm. seen anything on radar yet, but we'll see a couple of showers, a little bit of mist around the area, and then the humidity, all that's going to be changing in a big way. And we got a big problem in store later on this afternoon. More on that in just a moment. You can see how murky it is out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe a little bit of mist over at uh, 10 at 410. Visibility, we do have some fog going out 10, Bernie Stage, Kerrville a little bit, and just, you know, hints of it here and there. Reduced visibilities pretty much all around the area. Now, as far as temperatures, yeah, they are very, very warm. We're uh, five degrees above what the normal high temperature is right now in the mid to upper 60s, even a couple of low 70s out there. And you look at the wind, in most cases, there isn't much of a breeze. It's primarily out of the south, but then over there around Dryden, Ozona, the wind shifts around. That's as well as Del Rio. That's the front pulling in much, much drier air. And with the very windy conditions that are in store today, we're going to see wind gusts uh, over 25 miles per hour, 30, 35 at times. Bone dry air. Haven't had a drop of rain, and the front's not really going to do anything as far as rain when it comes on through here, anything substantial. So red flag warnings go into effect for most all of the area, including the I-35 corridor, including Bear County from noon up until 8 o'clock. So an extremely high fire danger later on today. Allergens. Mountain cedar is still on the high side. Dropped down a lot from the previous day's reading. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. Couple little sprinkly showers, maybe some mist out there. Gonna stay pretty mild and then it's going to become windy. Looking at the front moving through here in town between 7, 8 o'clock. So uh, take a jacket with you, even though we're still gonna be on the warm side today. Uh, that blustery wind and it's gonna be picking up throughout the day. 75 for high temperature. Then it's gonna cool down pretty quickly overnight tonight. So we're gonna see some cooler temperatures, especially the lows the next few days, and then even staying on the cool side going in toward the weekend. So more on the timing of the front and you're going to see anything that's really, really January temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Two women were found dead in a local hotel room by housekeepers yesterday morning on San Antonio's northeast side. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the latest on the investigation. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And I just got off the phone with the medical examiner's office, and they told me at this point they are still working to identify both of those women that were found dead in that hotel room. Here is what we know so far about this double homicide investigation. San Antonio hotel housekeepers found two dead bodies during their cleaning routine in a room at the Travel Lodge by Wyndham on I-35 near Loop 410 and us also near Bamsey on the city's northeast side. Police say those housekeepers found the victims who police say are women with gunshot wounds. They didn't exactly say where those gunshot wounds were. Investigators are also trying to speak with witnesses and they're searching for any type of surveillance video to help in this case. Police Chief William McManus says it didn't appear that there was a disturbance and added the investigation and it is in its early stages. Just stay with us on air and online if we get any more information on this investigation, including who those women were. Mark and Steph. Uh, this morning, the Federal Avi Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board are carefully looking through debris from a deadly plane crash in Yoakum. At least four people were killed, another taken to the hospital. The small plane crashed in a field about 100 miles east of San Antonio. A person with DPS says the plane was preparing to land at the Yoakum airport when it crashed. 
A church based out of Tennessee says the victims were part of their congregation. Investigators are still trying to confirm the identities of the victims. In the morning headlines, Representative Pat Fallon, who represents parts of Northeast Texas, has introduced articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Mayorkas facing accusations he failed to enforce the country's immigration laws, also contending he lied to Congress that the border was secure. The House Judiciary Committee is prepared to move ahead with formal proceedings if there's a consensus within the GOP. If an impeachment resolution gets through the House, there's virtually no chance of getting the two-thirds majority conviction in the U.S. Senate. In a statement, a spokesperson for Mayorkas made clear he has no plans to resign. A panel of judges will hear arguments as former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin seeks to appeal his murder conviction. Chauvin's case is expected to go before the Minnesota Court of Appeals later this morning. His lawyers are asking the court to overturn his conviction for the 2020 murder of George Floyd. The attorneys have accused prosecutors of misconduct and are arguing that the case should not have been tried in Minneapolis and the jury should have been fully sequestered. They also want the court to review whether the trial should have been delayed due to its high profile nature. In Australia, a Qantas flight traveling from New Zealand to Sydney, Australia has landed safely on a single engine after it issued a Mayday call over the Pacific. A flight with 145 passengers landed at Sydney International. Today, after a three-hour flight, Qantas says the Boeing 737 experienced an issue with one of its two engines about an hour from Sydney. Qantas said the pilot shut down the engine but did not specify the problem. Sydney's airport says emergency crews were put on standby as a precaution. Some passengers told reporters they heard a bang and a slight shudder when that incident happened. Well, concerns about school security after that six-year-old student shot his first grade teacher in Newport News, Virginia earlier this month. As ABC's Andrew Denbert explains, last night school officials met with parents and community members in what became a very emotional meeting. Fury and frustration were on full display at the school board meeting in Newport News, Virginia. I send my kids to school and find myself praying to God that they will return home safely. The public meeting marks the first with school leaders since police say a six-year-old boy shot his teacher this month. Don't want to have a family dinner where I talk about where my kids will hide in their school. More than 100 people signed up to speak. Desiree Yvette says her daughter rushed out of the classroom after witnessing the shooting. She's six. <laughs> She's terrified because the person that was advocating for her got hurt. At one point, the school board chair leaving her seat to console her. You've got this, okay? Thank you. Dozens of school employees also spoke out. One middle school teacher questioned the district's response to recent violence. Our students do not wonder if there will be another school shooting. They wonder when and where the next shooting will be. The elementary school remains closed. No timeline was given on the reopening. School leaders are now pledging to have a full-time security guard, a fully staffed front office, and a metal detector set up on campus by tomorrow. Administrators are also considering mandating clear backpacks. I think that those were things that should have been already implemented before this happened. In this case of the six-year-old, officials say a school employee got a tip about a possible gun at the school that day, and the boy's backpack was searched, but no weapon was found. Yvette pleaded with the school board to move forward with transparency and also listen to the parents. Listen to your teachers. Listen to your staff. Listen to them when they're asking for help. Listen to them when they're showing up every day and they're asking for support and how to help a student or students. The boy remains in custody. Police say he used his mother's gun. It's unclear how he got access to it. Meanwhile, the teacher is recovering. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 438, 67 degrees. Here's San Antonio Spurs getting a much needed win last night. What Kelvin Johnson is saying this morning about his career high of 36 points. Checking Transguide, getting reports of a bad accident out in the FM 78 Pat Booker Road area. We're checking it out right now. We're looking at 35 in Walsham. There are no Transguide cameras out there by JBSA Randolph. And let's look out there with live cam. A humid morning, almost warm at 67 degrees compared to, you know, the other mornings we've been having. But we're going to check in with Mike to see about the changes. We'll be right back.
442, former Spurs Jacques Vaughn returning to Alamo City last night as head coach of the Nets. They were minus Kevin Durant, who's nursing a knee injury. Silver and Black trying to snap a five-game skid. Spurs pushing the pace. Jeremy Sohan going strong to the hoop with a bucket and the foul. Put the Spurs on a 10-2 run. Malachi Branham making his way through the lane. Puts it up and in. Spurs up 14 late in the first, but it's a tie. 51 all at the break. Kelvin Jackson comes alive in the second half, going right down the lane, splitting the Nets defense for the layup. Next time down the court, he drives baseline for the bucket. Then under two minutes left in the quarter, Johnson gets into the paint again for two more points. Spurs up eight going into the fourth. Johnson's hot hand continues in the fourth as he connects on the three from the wing. And then look at him down with the one-handed punch off the fast break. Sohan dishes to Johnson, who streaks to the hoop and finishes with the slam. Then with under a minute to go, Keldon drains another three. He had a career-high 36 points to go along with 11 rebounds. Spurs get the win, 106 to 98. My teammates and coaches continue to put me in um, amazing situations uh, to be successful uh, as a young player, as a, as a as I'm coming up in the, in the NBA. So um, you know, just as much as it's me that is career high, it, it's for my team as well because they, you know, without them, it wouldn't be possible. All right, next the LA Clippers are in town. Tip off is Friday, seven o'clock at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Not only did Dak show up for the playoff game, so did Dallas's D holding the seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady scoreless in the first half for the first time since his very first ever playoff game back in 2001. And they did it a number of ways. J. Ron Kearse was one of the reasons for the early shutout, intercepting Brady in the end zone. And Micah Parsons had two pass defensed and one sack in the 31-14 victory on a wild card weekend in Tampa. First playoff win since 2018. It was the defensive mindset this game, you know, how we was going to go about it, you know, how we was going to go about our work this game and just going out there and execute, you know, it didn't have a whole lot to do with Tampa Bay, uh, it was more so what we were doing, you know, and I feel like we went out there and did what we were supposed to. We have to have that approach almost every time and uh, we got to continue that. We, you know, we can't off the gas. Everyone was locked in, disappointed about that Washington loss. We need that same focus, that same attention detail, that same execution going into this week too. We get to right our wrongs. Uh, we wrote one uh, tonight. We get to write, a, write another one tomorrow, so I meant next week. So, you know, it's all just about us doing our job. Like I said, uh, coming into this week, doing our job, reading our keys, getting our eyes on the right thing, and uh, we can go out there and play with anybody. So it's Cowboys Niners Sunday, 5.30 p.m. from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. The Niners are a tall order for sure, and I'm making a prediction right now. If they beat the Niners this weekend, if <laughs> they will win the NFC title game and go to the Super Bowl this year. I know, that's what a lot of fans are hoping mm -hmm. for. Yep, so we'll see if they can keep this uh, this hot trend going. Yeah, we'll see. Time now, 445 and 67 degrees for now. Up next, the family of an American public defender who died while celebrating his first wedding anniversary at a Mexican resort, demanding answers. And let's look out at the roads with Transkai looking over at I-35 at Walsham Road where things are moving. But we do have problems off of Pat Booker Road. Yeah, we've got reports right now. We're trying to confirm it, but reports of a really bad accident at uh, Pat Booker and FM 78 out there near the main gate of uh, JBSA Randolph Air Force Base. So we'll try to keep you posted as we get more information on that. And I was getting used to the warm afternoons, but I didn't expect to feel a, a warm morning. So you know, it's right. funny because it, it's even warmer this morning, and then the humidity came back in here, and all that humidity surging in, got a couple little little spots of mist. I didn't see, I didn't see I anything either. out there. There's just a hint of it showing up in the hill country as of right now, as far as a light sprinkle. And then we'll see a couple more as the morning rolls on. Don't get really excited about the, the rain around here, though. Beautiful picture. Love that one. And the caption, God outdid himself again tonight. Amen to that. It was absolutely perfect out there, looks wise. And uh, this morning you can see it's that little bit of a, Kind of a haze off in the distance there. We do have some fog. Burning stage down to two and a half miles visibility right now. Portis A at five, five New Braunfels. Nothing real pea soup out there, but just hints of it everywhere. And that's just because all that humidity has surged back on in here. And this is the only thing really showing up on radar right now. These few little sprinkles out there right around uh, Kerrville heading in toward Fredericksburg. That's about it. 
going to keep watching radar this morning, but again, this is not going to be any uh, any great shakes as far as the rain is concerned. And like Mark said, a little bit of mist out there, so the roads may be on the damp side. So here's what's uh, going on with the the humidity. Dew points have gone up 15, 20, 25 degrees or more just since yesterday because it was fairly pleasant yesterday after we got some of that relatively drier air moving on in here. We've got a 20% chance for a few little light showers this morning. Temperatures will stay pretty steady and then as the front moves on through here, they are going to be dropping down a few more degrees, then starting to bounce back and the wind's going to be picking up out of the north to northwest. We'll have a lot more sunshine later on today. You're going to be up to 70 at noon, 75 for high temperatures, so still 12 above normal. Lots of sunshine and very, very windy conditions and the winds sustained 20, 25 miles per hour and then gusting 30, 35 miles per hour at times. Here's the computer model and again, it's not very uh, encouraging as far as rain. A couple little light little sprinkles around here and then as the front moves on through roughly between seven, eight o'clock here in town. It's going to clear things out very quickly. We'll have a lot of sunshine then later on today. And as far as the humidity, you can see that dry air that comes on in here pushes all the humidity out bone dry air. And of course, since they haven't had any rain in forever. It seems like that with windy conditions and these wind gusts that are going to be again, 20, 25, close to 30 miles per hour all around the area throughout the afternoon. That's what's prompting the red flag warning to be issued goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock tonight. And it's about the western northwestern two thirds of our area. It does include San Antonio, the I-35 corridor, and then everything out there in parts of the hill country. And we've got a fairly decent compared to what we've been having fairly decent little chunk of uh, some drier and cooler air that's going to be uh, working its way in here eventually. So it's not going to be real, real cold initially behind this front, but we will over the next couple of days get cooler 70 today at noon, mostly sunny. It's going to be windy and winds going to be picking up later on this morning and staying blustery all day long out of the northwest again, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusty 75 for high temperature. Now with the dry air, clear skies tonight that allows temperatures to drop down. So we'll be down close to normal tomorrow at 42, 44 on Friday morning, still on the warm side in the afternoon, but cooler Friday and cooler still on Saturday, only in the uh, low 60s around here. And we've got a better chance of rain, not great, but better chance of rain on Saturday. And then we'll stay on the coolish side. And then another sort of dry front, if you will, moves through here on Tuesday. A couple of showers and then uh, lower humidity as well. Wow, what a mild winter, except for yeah. that shot before Christmas. I mean, yes. But then at least are those temperatures starting really, you know, Friday for the most part are going to be closer to normal. And the days are starting to get longer now, which is a win. Yes. Yep, the folks. sun sets at 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah, okay. We'll take it. Thank you, Mike. 452, 67 degrees. So here, winning a lot of numbers. Pick 3097, Fireball 0. Daily 4, 5843, Fireball 4. Your cash five numbers, 8, 9, 12, 14, 21. And Mega Millions, that jackpot is at $20 million. 2, 12, 18, 24, 39, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 3, Power Balls up to $439 million. In this morning's GMA First Look, Mystery in Paradise. The family of an American public defender who died while celebrating his first wedding anniversary at a Mexican resort is demanding answers, saying they believe he was the victim of a crime. The Mexican authorities are currently investigating the case and they've released almost no information at all. This is also uh, a very dangerous part of the world. It's important that everybody just keep an open mind. Four Star La Roca's Resort and Spa, which advertises itself as the best choice south of the border, located 15 minutes south of Tijuana, is now at the center of the investigation. Authorities confirming the day before the couple's anniversary, Blair was found dead from an apparent fall from a third floor balcony, calling the tragedy an unfortunate accident. But Blair's family now hiring a private investigator and we'll have much more on his family's urgent search for answers coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 456, 67 degrees. This morning, the White House is brushing aside criticism of its response to the discovery of classified documents and official records at President Biden's home and former office. Why the White House says it plans to withhold some of that information. At its case, we've been tracking for years an Air Force major accused of murdering his wife back in 2019 here in the uh, San Antonio area, just ahead 
what's next once the jury selection is completed and why that trial was delayed for so long. And let's look outside with TransGuy looking over at I-35 at Walsham Road where things are moving. However, Stephen Cavazos is tracking a pretty big accident off Pat Booker Road. We're going to check in with him after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The White House facing new scrutiny over its transparency in the case of the Biden classified documents. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. That plus the role the FBI almost played in this case coming up. Let's look out there with a live cam. Not the cool morning you'd expect in January. We're at 67 degrees and it's a little humid out there. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, the 18th of January. Thanks for joining us. Uh, doesn't feel like January. I know it was a little too cold for me right before Christmas, but wow, this is warm almost. Yeah, so far so good for a lot of folks here in South Texas who hate the cold. Mike goes <laughs> <to> joins <laughs> us now. That's going to be changing, though. Uh, you know, just you're talking about this morning. Tomorrow morning is going to be a whole different story. More on that coming up in just a moment. First of all, temperature. Yeah, it does not feel like January. The normal high average high temperature is 63. We're sitting at 67 right now, and that bottom number, the dew point, is at 64. So we've got very high relative humidity. Humidity just surged back in here in the overnight hours, and that, as it's just kind of pumping on in here, is getting squeezed out, and the atmosphere really can't hold that much more, and that's why we're seeing a little bit of, oh, a couple of spots of mist, a few sprinkles out there. We'll see a few more as the front approaches. 75 for a high temperature today, so despite the fact the front moves through, still going to be definitely on the warm side. It's also going to be extremely windy today. The aquifer yesterday's reading dropped down four tenths of a foot and allergens. Mountain cedar is still high, but it dropped down a whole bunch from the previous day. Same thing with mold is on the uh, the low side. So we've got some fog starting off once again this morning because of all this uh, high humidity out there. Three miles visibility at Bernie stage. Just hints of it everywhere. Not anything too awfully thick around the area. There's also now Mark said he saw a little bit of uh, just a, some mist on the windshield coming into work. I didn't see anything. And then we've got just a couple little sprinkles that are this is what's showing up on radar. There may be some mist out there, but right here around uh, Comfort, there have been a few around Fredericksburg as well as Kerrville. Again, that's the only thing showing up on radar as of right now. But as the front approaches and you can see the very, very dry air out there to the west of us with the dew points dropping off, that will tend to squeeze out a couple of more light showers as the uh, the morning rolls on. That's going to be as we get into kind of the heart of the morning commute. Also in behind that front with the very dry air, very blustery winds, red flag warnings have been issued going to affect at noon up until 8 o'clock for the about the western two thirds of our area, including the I-35 corridor from San Antonio up toward Austin, a very high fire danger today. So got some mild conditions, a shower, sprinkles, the front windy and then clearing later on today. We're going to have a beautiful day, very windy though, sunny, warm, and boy, those northwesterly winds probably going to be shaking up the mountain cedar trees as well. Then tomorrow it's going to be much cooler down close to a normal low temperature, so it'll be uh, jacket weather and then very pleasant in the afternoon, still kind of on the mild side, but we'll continue to cool down as we go in toward the weekend. We'll have some showers around here on Saturday and it's going to be kind of a chilly day, cloudy and definitely a chill and it's going to stay kind of cool even into the first part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. And you got some big problems out there already, right? Yes, Mike, we do. Uh, good morning to you. But uh, let's get a look here around town. 35 at Walls, and we're going to start there with that rotation here on Transguide. Uh, both the upper and lower levels there at Maine, you can see not really seeing any problems out there. But unfortunately, we do have a pretty serious crash that we are hearing reports of near JBSA Randolph. We'll get to that area in just a moment. But as you can see here, in town. Really not much of a worry as the commute is getting rolling as we're inching maybe minute by minute closer to that morning rush, but so plenty of time to take advantage of the quiet roadways. Now taking you to the map, we do have a new crash that popped up near State Highway 151 at 410. You see that icon as on the map on the west side of San Antonio, so we'll get a closer look at that and find out exactly how that will impact the drive time, but let's bring it into the big problem right now. That's going to be right here uh, at FM 78 just past Pat Booker Road. That's near JBSA Randolph. Now we are we do have Katrina Weber who is working to get a little bit more information out there on the scene. We can tell you at this time that at least one of those lanes is shut down, but it doesn't appear to be impacting the gates there at JBSA Randolph. Just watch out for crews. We're going to keep a close eye on it and hopefully hear from Katrina a little bit later on. But back here in town 37 at Fair Avenue, the morning is still pretty quiet right now. We'll get updates on that crash and keep you guys posted in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. 
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a driver crashed into a pillar under a bridge along I-35 this morning. Happened around 2.30 a.m. near the intersection of Eisenhower on the northeast side. Police say the driver was going too fast when he crashed into the pillar, then rolled into the intersection. He was taken to the hospital and his condition is unknown right now. No word yet on what caused him to crash. University of Texas students and faculty will no longer be able to use the app TikTok on campus, Wi-Fi or wired networks. The block to the app is in response to Governor Greg Abbott's recent mandate for all state agencies to remove the app from government issued devices. Our Sarah Costa joins us live to break this all down. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. A lot of probably upset students who use TikTok. Now, Governor Abbott issuing that directive on December 7th. Students learned about this via an email that was sent out yesterday by the university. In the governor's directive, it outlines that TikTok harvests a vast amount of data from its users' devices, including when, where, and how they conduct Internet activity, and offers this information to the Chinese government. Since the university's announcement Tuesday morning, multiple other Texas universities, including those at UT Dallas and the Texas A&M University System, have also announced that they are restricting the use of the app on their campus networks. The University of Houston and Texas Tech University say they are still waiting for state guidance to be released before moving forward with a ban of the app. Now, across the country, a growing number of universities have banned the app on devices connected to campus networks, including Auburn University in Alabama, the University of Oklahoma, and the schools within the university system of Georgia. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, an Air Force major accused of murdering his wife is waiting for the final members of a bear carrying jury to be selected. That jury selection process is still underway and nearly four years since Andreen McDonald's death. Her remains were found on a ranch about six miles from the couple's home in 2019. The pandemic played a part in pushing this case back. A large amount of that evidence also delayed the trial. Andre McDonald's legal team claims prosecutors bogged them down with evidence to look through. The difficulty that we continually have in this case is the state giving us discovery that they say they've given to us about a year and a half ago, but they give us the same items over and over and over again. The defense asked for a continuance, but a judge denied that motion. That means as soon as a jury panel is seated, the trial can begin. McDonald remains out on bond and faces up to life in prison if found guilty. You can count on KSET to follow the case on KSET.com, KSET Plus, and KSET's YouTube channel. This morning, President Joe Biden is facing new questions over those classified documents from his time as vice president discovered at his home and an office. As ABC's Jay O'Brien explains, the FBI almost played a role in searching that residence. This morning, new revelations that the Department of Justice considered sending FBI agents to President Biden's Delaware home to monitor the search for classified documents. Sources familiar with the matter tell ABC News because the Biden team was fully cooperating with the government, the DOJ ultimately agreed to back off and let Biden's lawyers carry out their own searches in November. President Biden largely staying silent on the latest batch of classified documents found in his private home, including five the White House revealed were discovered last Thursday. The administration now under fire for not disclosing that information until the weekend. I have been forthcoming from this podium. And Ian Sam, spokesperson for the White House Counsel's Office, telling reporters, while we're limited in what we can say during an ongoing DOJ inquiry, we are providing as much information publicly as is appropriate. House Republicans now launching two separate congressional inquiries into the documents, accusing the administration of waiting months to tell the American people about their discovery. And this is why there's such hypocrisy behind the Bidens once again, something big that comes forward prior to an election where they kind of keep it quiet, where the American public could actually have a say in it. But the White House hitting back, blasting Republicans for what they call hypocrisy, noting that they had little interest in investigating the reams of classified documents seized by the FBI at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Now, in addition to those congressional investigations, there's also a special counsel looking into these documents. The White House has said it will cooperate fully with the special counsel, but it's unclear what their level of cooperation will be with those Republican-led probes in the House. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 509, 67 degrees.
and you don't have time, or you don't have time to wait in that line at Starbucks, how DoorDash is making it easier for coffee lovers. Next, what the city of San Antonio is planning to try to do to cut down the number of illegal street racing and why previous ordinances just have not gotten support. And if you're a fan of the warmer weather, well, this morning's for you. 67 degrees, a little more humid than it was yesterday morning. We're going to be checking in with Mike to see any changes we can expect by the weekend. We'll be right back. The city of San Antonio is being forced to consider a possible solution to deal with the illegal street racing and street takeovers. This after a video of a takeover that included shots fired and several car crashes went viral. This happened on I-10 near Callahan on Sunday. The city considered an ordinance last year that would go after spectators, but the head of the Public Safety Committee said there just wasn't any support and some had some concerns about that ordinance. A really difficult uh, crime to, to police in a way, right? Uh, because it happens so fast and once that call is made, they kind of scatter. And she is asking community members with ideas to attend the next public safety meeting or email her with office suggestions. 513, 67 degrees. And coming up next, ready for an upgrade, Apple is showing off their new MacBook Pros and that have the most powerful Apple processors yet. And great news for soccer fans. We'll tell you when HBO Max will start streaming live U.S. soccer matches. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad we did this! I'm so glad we did this. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. I'm so glad we did this. Edward Jones. Pain hits fast, so get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser-drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. And now, get relief without a pill with Tylenol Dissolve Packs. Relief without the water. Who says you can't go for bold without going broke? Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. Welcome back, everybody. 517 on your Wednesday morning. That's right. We have humid weather again, so we'll talk to you in just a mm -hmm. bit about all, all that fun. What's yeah. the latest, Stephen? Well, you know, we've been tracking the roads. A few issues have popped up. Let's get a quick peek around town. You can see uh, right now the roads, uh, for the most part, here in town, 10 at the Y. Not too bad. Uh, it's a normal start to our Wednesday morning, but we do have our fair share of problems out on the roadway. I do want to get to one incident that popped up here. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. San Antonio Fire Page is reporting this as a vehicle fire along State Highway 151 near Penn Road. Uh, I'm not catching anything on the trans guide cameras that are within that vicinity, but still be on the look out. Good news is it doesn't appear to be impacting any traffic at this time, but let's get you to the big problem, which is right up here closer to the northeast side. That uh, crash that was reported here along FM 78 just past Pat Booker Road near JBSA Randolph. We now have Katrina Weber, who is live there now with the very latest. Good morning. I just got some information from Universal City Police, and they tell me it is a pedestrian who was hit and killed. A woman killed as she was walking here along FM 78. Now, they still have this area blocked off because they're very much involved in the investigation. Uh, police tell me that uh, the driver who hit the woman has stopped, is cooperating with them, and does not appear to be under the influence of anything. Uh, they are believing that this woman was simply walking here on FM 78 in a very dark area of the road when she was hit. This happened about 3 o'clock this morning. Now, you can see traffic still moving in these eastbound uh, lanes. Actually, they have one lane that is open in this area. But the westbound side of FM 78 here is shut down and will be that way for the next couple of hours. Now, the question on people's minds as they head toward uh, Joint Base Randolph is how will this affect traffic? Well, if you're coming from San Antonio from 1604, that is... Uh, this is beyond that area, so that will not be affected. But if you're trying to get in from Universal City, well, that is where the shutdown occurs, so you'll have to find another way around. Uh, but again, police say this is still under investigation, but at this point, they do not believe that the driver was at fault. This pedestrian, they say, was walking on the highway in a dark area. Reporting live from Universal City, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you very much, Katrina. And of course, we're going to keep you updated on that throughout the rest of the morning. All right, this is what it looked like in a lot of areas yesterday. Thermometers were well above 80, hit 79 officially out there at the airport, did not hit the record of 82, but this is January. Well, things are definitely going to be changing and those changes are coming about later on this morning. Here's a look out there and you can see even uh, some of that fuzz around some of the street lights. So a lot of humidity. We do have some fog. Temperatures are very mild. All of these numbers are anywhere from about uh, 10, 15 degrees above the normal high temperature, uh, excuse me, about five to 10 degrees above the normal high and anywhere from say 20, 25 degrees above the normal low temperature that, like I said, will be changing some, <clears throat> excuse me, some fog out there right around Bernie stage hints of it everywhere as you saw just that little bit of a uh, little bit of fuzz around some of the street lights and uh, even everywhere in South Texas, you've got some of this fog. Now there's a little bit of some light mist, even a couple of sprinkles. The only thing really showing up on radar right now is out here in parts of the hill country. You can see just these few little spots right there around comfort. Uh, Fredericksburg had a couple of them. Again, this is what is, if you will, heavy enough to show up on radar. But as the front approaches hit some of this moisture, that's going to be squeezing out a bit more in the way of some light showers around here this morning. Temperatures are going to stay fairly steady. Front moves on through. We will drop down a few degrees. Wind's going to be shifting around and that's going to clear things out pretty quickly. So by mid to late morning, we're going to see plenty of sunshine around here. Any little bit of that rain, there may be some leftover showers off to the east this morning. That's going to be getting on out of here. We'll be up to 70 today at noon and then 75 for high temperature, very windy conditions, and that's what's going to be prompting the high fire danger around here. Windy and very dry conditions. Computer model as the front moves through again, it's going to touch off a couple of more of these little sprinkly showers around here. Things clear on out and we see plenty of sunshine, a lot of sunshine for the next couple of days as well. And there's the drier air out there to the northwest. And that's continuing to work its way down in here that will as the front moves through that will then push all the humidity on out. And since we haven't had any rain and that bone dry air and the blustery conditions that are expected with wind gusts in the uh, 20 25 degree range or 25 mile per hour range and 34 mile per hour wind gusts up there in Kerrville just even early afternoon. Again, that's what prompts the red flag warning and that goes into effect at noon up until eight o'clock this evening for a good Good chunk of the area, including San Antonio and the I-35 corridor up in toward Austin. So this low, which is moving just to the north of us, a little too far north to really give us any decent rain from it. That's what's pulling that front through. For the most part, it is one of these Pacific fronts brings in drier air that allows for some cooler temperatures around here and just gets us basically back down to normal. The next low, which is going to be sliding on in here on Saturday, this one's going to be a little bit closer, a little bit better chance for some rain on Saturday, and that will give us sort of a, a reinforcing shot of the drier air and keep temperatures right around normal, even going into the first part of next week. 70 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, windy conditions, and then later on this afternoon, the high temperature still warm up to 75. So still 10, 15 degrees above normal and those winds out of the northwest 15, 25 miles per hour and gusting. Then tomorrow it is going to be much cooler in the morning, just down to a normal low temperature. Then 42 will still be on the warm side in the afternoon. Then we'll start to see temperatures drop down to where they should be Friday and uh, going in toward the weekend as well with uh, cooler readings around here and that chance of rain on Saturday. The weekend looks a lot different than this morning. Yes, it does. And tomorrow morning is going to feel a whole lot different than this morning. We'll be prepared. Thank you, Mike. 523, 67 degrees. Look here, winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, 097, Fireball zero. Daily four, 5843, Fireball four. Cash five numbers, 8, 9, 12, 14, and 21. Mega millions, 2, 12, 18, 24, 39. The Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Madonna. Yeah. I dare you mm -hmm. to do a world tour and play your greatest uh, hits. You think people would come to that show? I'll be there. <laughs> well, I'll be there. You there? Oh, yeah. I'm there. There? there? Okay, so the answer is. Yeah. yeah.
Madonna made it official with a not safe for work video filled with celebrity friends. Her celebration world tour will feature four decades of the legend's greatest hits. The tour launches July 15th in Vancouver, British Columbia. Tickets go on sale this Friday. More info at Madonna.com. Well, this was a big transitional time in my professional career. Sally Field has had quite a career, including two Academy Awards and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now she's set for another major honor, the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award. Field will be the 58th recipient of SAG-AFTRA's highest tribute when she's honored at this year's Screen Actors Guild Awards on February 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, 527, 67 degrees. Some House Republicans are seeking to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas just ahead why some in the GOP are skeptical. And need a new car. How about this new E-Ray Corvette? Corvette, rather. Why did I change the name again? Why this isn't your normal hybrid vehicle? Check that out. Look, the DHS Secretary Mayorka has made a lot of mistakes, and there's clearly a lot of people upset. This morning, some lawmakers are targeting the head of Homeland Security, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, with articles of impeachment. We'll explain. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. Doesn't feel like January. We are at 67 degrees, but looking for things to change just a little bit. And good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, the 18th of January. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far. So I, I know you're a fan of the cold weather, yes. so this must be <laughs> killing you. <laughs> it, and just wait, because things are going to be changing later on uh, this morning. Now, it's not going to be real, real cold today. It's going to be very windy, but then cooler temperatures are going to be moving in here over the next couple of days. So tomorrow morning is going to be a whole different situation. Here's what it looks like, and you can see maybe a little bit of a... Uh, Kind of that glow and that little fuzz around some of the street lights out there because we got so much humidity hanging around here. Humidity really came back in in the overnight hours. Temperatures at 67 and then that number dew point is up a good 15 close to 20 degrees compared to what it was at this time yesterday. Wind is very light out of the southwest at three miles per hour. Everybody's in the 60s and 70s right now well above and we're a good 25 degrees or so above the normal low temperature right now and actually warmer than what the normal high is. A little bit of fog all around, not anything too, too thick though. And then notice how around Ozona visibility as well as Del Rio does clear out because much drier air is working its way in here. That's right along the front, which is now working its way in through the uh, hill country. As that comes through, very windy conditions, very dry, and that's prompting red flag warnings to go into effect at noon up until eight o'clock for the western two thirds of our area, right along I-35, including San Antonio, and then heading up in toward Austin. We do have mountain cedar on the high side, although it came down a lot lot from yesterday's reading. It's going to be interesting to see what tomorrow's reading is in behind these very blustery conditions. Mold is also on the low side, 70 at noon, 75, then later on this afternoon and very windy. Winds are going to start to pick up as the front moves through here about 7, 8 o'clock this morning here in town. And then, like I said, much cooler low temperatures and even cooler high temperatures as we go into tomorrow as well as the weekend, plus another chance for a couple of showers on Saturday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, so got that big problem on the northeast side? We sure do, Mike, and we have another problem on the opposite side of town. Let's tell you what's taking place right now on the roadways. Trans guide cameras are really just picking up traffic moving there along US 90, and uh, it's getting a little bit busier minute by minute. We're about maybe an hour or so away before morning rush, so I would say right now is again a perfect time to take advantage of a lot of these empty roadways. Although it is getting busier, we're not seeing a whole lot of problems here in town. Now, that being said, we do have our issue that we reported here earlier, that vehicle fire. Looks like Texas has uh, officially reported this in the westbound lanes of State Highway 151. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that we're going to be able to get a shot of those conditions, at least right now, but we're monitoring it right now in the traffic lab, but not really picking up any slowdowns at this point. But the big problem lies over here on the northeast side, just out near JBSA Randolph. That deadly incident involving a pedestrian here off FM 78 just past Pup Bat Pat Booker Road, pardon me. Uh, that's where we find our Katrina Weber, who is live there now. Katrina is still uh, that one lane of traffic shut down. 
Yeah, actually, it's the westbound lanes that are closed. The eastbound side has one lane open. There's a death investigation going on here. Now, Universal City Police say this has been this way since about 3 o'clock this morning. They say a driver who was coming down FM 78 hit a pedestrian, a woman who was walking, they believe, along FM 78. That woman was killed. Police say the driver did stop immediately and try to help her. Also, another driver stopped and tried to help as well, but there was nothing they could do. That woman did die here at the scene. And they say this is going to be closed for at least a couple of hours as they continue their investigation. But again, this is just east of uh, Pat Booker Road on FM 78, just east of the gates to JBSA Randolph. So this is not not affecting anyone who happens to be coming from San Antonio or from 1604 to the base. If you're coming in from Universal City, though, this is uh, closed, and so that is, you will have to find another way to get around. But again, one lane still open going toward Universal City uh, around this accident. Reporting live in Universal City, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Well, a double homicide, a possible street racing ban, and a new podcast highlighting the shocking double life of a local police officer who was shot and killed. All these are stories that are trending on KSAT.com. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with a look at all of these trending stories. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Let's go ahead and start with that new season of Texas Crime Stories. And the first episode highlights Balcones Heights police officer with ties to the Texas Mexican mafia that was killed in a San Antonio tattoo shop. It was a story you'd see in a Hollywood crime show, except it happened right here on the streets of San Antonio. The double life of Balcones Heights police officer ended in a shocking shooting. The first episode of the new season of Texas Crime Stories spotlights this double life and killing of Julian Piscina. Piscina was shot to death by two masked gunmen in a San Antonio tattoo shop back in May of 2014. KSAT host Erica Hernandez and Lee Waldman will look back on this case and Piscina's ties to the Texas, Mexi Texas Mexican Mafia. The podcast episode was released yesterday and is now available on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and don't forget to su subscribe. Now the investigation where two women were found shot and killed yesterday at a northeast side hotel. San Antonio Hotel housekeepers found two of the women dead during their cleaning routine in a room at a travel lodge by Wyndham on I-35 near Loop 410 and near Bamsey on the northeast side. Police say those housekeepers found the women with gunshot wounds, but police did not say where those women were shot. Investigators were also speaking, are also trying to speak with witnesses, and they're searching for surveillance video to help the case. The medical examiner's office has not released the identities of those women at this time. Street racing is a known problem in the Alamo City, and now the city of San Antonio is being forced to consider a possible solution to deal with illegal street racing and street takeovers. This after a video of a takeover that included shots fired and Car, several car crashes that went viral. It happened on I-10 near Callahan Sunday and is considered an ordinance last year that would go after spectators. But the head of the Public Safety Committee says some concerns were raised about that ordinance, saying it's a difficult crime to police. So she's asking community members with ideas to attend the next public safety meeting or email her office with solutions. You can read all of these stories in depth right now on our website at ksat.com. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, the head of Homeland Security may soon be on the hot seat. Just days into the start of the new Congress, articles of impeachment against Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas are drafted by House Republicans. However, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, not all of the GOP is on board. Senior House Republicans are getting ready for hearings that focus on the migrant crisis at the U.S.'s southern border. I've got a lot of work to do, and we're going to do it. Not if some House Republicans have their way. GOP Representative Pat Fallon of Texas introduced articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, alleging he failed to enforce the country's immigration laws, also contending he lied to Congress that the border was secure. I'll never use impeachment for political purposes. But if the person is a derelict in their duties and they, they're harming Americans and Americans are actually dying by the lack of their work, that could rise to that occasion. 
The House Judiciary Committee is prepared to move ahead with formal proceedings if there's a consensus within the GOP, according to a source directly familiar with the matter. Impeachment is in case of emergency break glass, and it seems as if we have taken that to a, a common thing. It shouldn't be a common thing. Not uh, Look, the DHS Secretary Mayorkas has, has made a lot of mistakes, and there's clearly a lot of people upset. Other GOP skeptics include Rep. Don Bacon, who said, quote, I don't think independent swing voters are interested in impeachments. In a statement, a spokesperson for Mayorkas made clear he has no plans to resign. I've got a lot of work to do. I'm proud to do it alongside 250,000 incredibly dedicated and talented individuals in the Department of Homeland Security. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Threat investigations by U.S. Capitol Police dropped last year for the first time in five years. However, the agency's police chief says the number of threats against members of Congress is still too high. Capitol Police say all members of Congress receive threats, and the amount of threats against both parties is similar, according to the force. Capitol Police Threat Assessment Section investigated just over 7,500 cases in 2022, down from more than 9,600 in 2021 and 8,600 in 2020. Intercepted guns at airports are on the rise, and all the TSA stopped more than 6,500 guns last year, and 88% of those were loaded. But not all airports are equal. Atlanta takes the top spot for most firearms. The Transportation Security Administration reports 448 guns were found at the city's airport last year. Texas was also high on the list, with airports serving Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston, filling in the number two and three slots. Florida had the most airports in the top 10 with Orlando, Fort Lauderdale and Tampa airports all in the rankings. The federal government will not seek the death penalty against accused Elmar, El Paso Walmart shooter Patrick Crucis. He's accused of killing 23 people and wounding close to two dozen others at the store back in 2019. The filing did not offer a reason why the death penalty is now off the table. The murder trial is expected to start next January. Time now is 541 and 66 degrees for now. You ready for a new Corvette? Up next, the horsepower behind the General Motors' first ever hybrid Corvette and how much it'll cost you. And let's look out there for live cam. I would say no jacket required, really. 66 degrees. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines, General Motors is rolling out the first ever hybrid Corvette, the E-Ray. Now, the car's front wheels use an electric motor, and the back ones rely on a gasoline engine. The E-Ray is also GM's fastest accelerating Corvette model ever. It has a 655 horsepower and can go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in two and a half seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, well, the Corvette E-Ray is not a plug-in hybrid. Its battery pack is mounted between the two seats and is charged as the car slows and brakes and at times while the car drives. The price for the Corvette E-Ray starts at $104,000, but it's not for sale just yet. The E-Ray will be sold sometime later this year. Need a new job? Netflix could be willing to pay a new flight attendant to work on one of its private jets, up to $385,000. The video streaming company says the right candidate should be flexible and willing to take on extra responsibilities like maintaining the stockroom, working both domestic and international flights, weekends, holidays, and extended periods of travel. They should also be able to do the job with discretion and little direction. The company says the final compensation amount will be determined by a, quote, wide range of compensation factors, including you not sharing your Netflix password. <laughs> That's too hard. Last part, I made that up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 545, 66 degrees. Coming up next, the Animal Defense League is here with a precious puppy that needs a new home. Hi, Frank. <laughs> that name just fits him. Nadia's here from the <laughs> Animal Defense League. Who is this little guy? This is Frank. So oh, I shouldn't say little guy. He is quite a chunky monkey. She picked him up and was like, <laughs> so how much do you think he weighs? Yeah, he's, he's 31 pounds and uh, yeah, hasn't missed a meal. Senior boy, eight years old. Um, and yeah, he is so loving and cuddly. And it makes him look bigger because he's got these little spindly legs <laughs> and then this just big, big body on 
<laughs> here. So yeah, he still has a lot going for him at eight years old. Small dogs always have a much, much longer lifespan. So yes. yeah, be a good little couch potato puppy, wouldn't you? Don't know yes. if you're going to be doing many uh, wind sprints out there. So <laughs> what you got going on? Yeah, so this month we actually have a, I'm going to actually put him down because he's a little heavy, <laughs> but we have uh, our vaccination clinics and mm -hmm. microchip events. It's happening on um, Saturday from 9 to 11 at Woodlawn Lake Park, right in that pavilion area. Um, so you can bring out your pets, get them microchipped if they're not, or get their shots updated. Wonderful. So, yeah. Well, if you'd like more information about that or Frank, Frank, Mr. <laughs> didn't miss a meal, head on over to the Animal Defense League, 1100 Nacogdoches, the Paul Jolly Center, uh, across from the zoo. Pet Smart on Four Winds, or go to the website, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Of course. Frank the Tank. Aww. You know what, though? That could be solved. A couple of good walks throughout the year. Yeah. Going to shed a few pounds. He'll be in great shape. Yeah, but he looks happy and healthy, so. Yep. We'll I'd take him. I like still that. would call him Frank the Tank. Yeah. yeah. 549 right now. <laughs> Frank. To check back with our Steven. Frank also likes belly rubs. I was rubbing his Aww. belly yesterday. Oh, so you got his. to meet him up, up, up close. Cool. Yeah, he's a very cute dog. They have a lot of fantastic animals over at the Animal Defense League. But uh, traffic's looking pretty fantastic right now. Let's get a quick look around town, show you what you can expect for this Wednesday morning commute 35 at Walsham. Not a bad spot, but definitely getting busier minute by minute. However, we do have our fair share of problems in certain areas of town. I'm going to take you right over here to the big incident of the morning, that deadly incident involving a pedestrian at FM 78 just past Pat Booker Road. This is near JBSA Randolph. We've had Katrina Weber live there throughout the morning. We know that at least one lane of traffic was shut down, making uh, the commute maybe a little bit difficult for folks coming from Universal City to the base, but it doesn't look like we're seeing any big slowdowns in that area just yet. Just be mindful of that. We're going to hear from her a little, a little bit later on in the newscast, but let's give you a wide look at the map and really it's a lot of green out there as we take you back to the metropolitan area. We did have a crash or a vehicle fire that was reported off State Highway 151 just uh, past uh, Pin Road, but that's already cleared out. So better news to report. Haven't had a chance to get to these travel times. If you are going to be heading into San Antonio, no real rush at this hour. Things are still in the green from Seguin, 29 minutes on I-10 westbound, 33 minutes on 87 northbound. If you're traveling in from Lavernia and for our friends in Floresville, 28 minutes to the Alamo City. And back here in town, this is what you can expect at least for the next few minutes or so. Uh, morning rush is about maybe a few uh, half an hour away, uh, but right now things are shaping up to be fine, at least here from these trans guide cameras. But remember that crash that uh, the incident Katrina is at. There are no trans guide cameras out there, so uh, she'll show us those conditions a little bit later on, but hopefully better news to report. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we hope uh, I guess things are shaping up for people who like the cold weather. Yeah, it is going to get cooler the next couple of mornings. We have to put up with the uh, windy, dry conditions today, and that's prompting very high fire danger out there. Great picture. Beautiful evening on the east side and the uh, Alamo Dome and Tower of the Americas in the background there. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect shot. Now, at first, when I saw this picture, I was like, oh, the no, that's not the moon. It's just a street light because it was pretty cloudy out there last night. And notice we got a couple of drops on the lens now over there at 10 at 410. So a little bit of uh, some mist, a couple of light sprinkles. Roads are going to be damp and this is going to be the situation for the next couple of hours as that front approaches. We get all this humidity getting pumped back on in here. Very, very warm temperatures. We've actually gone up a degree in the past hour and everybody is well, way above the normal high temperature and 25 degrees above where we should be. Visibility, there's a hint of fog pretty much everywhere, not anything too awfully thick. And here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. Here is being the line of rain being pushed along the front. Notice how most of it is up there to the north of us. And then just a couple little uh, sprinkly showers in parts of the hill country and a couple of them around here as well. So 20% chance for one or two of those little sprinkles out there this morning as you saw a couple of drops on the uh, the trans guide or the uh, live cam lens out there on the northwest side of town. Temperatures will stay pretty steady the next couple of hours as the front moves through. We will drop down somewhat and then come back up and things are going to be clearing out fairly quickly as well. We keep all the clouds around here, a couple of sprinkles through the morning commute and then we see more sunshine later on today. Very windy conditions, 75 for a high temperature today. There's the dry air that's moving in and again that line of rain was right about there just ahead of that front moving on through here that dry air will barrel on in and with those very low uh, dew points very low relative humidity out to the west again that's what prompts the red flag warning to go into effect in those wind gusts 30 miles per hour even later on this morning forecast out there at bernie stage and so 
as the uh, red flag warning goes into effect at noon up until 8 o'clock tonight. So very, very high fire danger around here. Temperature at noon is going to be up to 70 and we'll have a couple of sprinkles around this morning and then windy conditions clearing out quickly 75 for high temperatures. So we are going to be definitely on the warm side. Once again, those winds out of the northwest 15 25 miles per hour bone dry air out there and this tomorrow then with the dry air clear skies lighter wind we're going to be down closer to a normal low temperature 42 degrees so chilly big warm up throughout the day not as warm on friday almost normal temperatures and then another chance of rain on saturday and maybe again by the middle of next week thank you mike 554 67 degrees look at your winning lot of numbers pick three zero nine seven fireball zero daily four five eight four three fireball four cash five eight nine twelve fourteen twenty one and mega millions two twelve eighteen twenty four thirty nine mega ball eighteen mega player Three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, I am tracking that storm that is now moving through the Rockies and will eventually get to the plains there with up to two feet of snow. It's going to be really difficult to travel anywhere in pink. And we will talk about the other hazards ahead of it. Also, the latest on embattled New York Congressman George Santos. He was assigned seats on two House committees as he faces federal and state investigations. Now this morning, what else he falsely claimed in a newly surfaced radio interview. We'll have those stories and so much more on GMA. And ahead the next hour of GMSA, latest concerns surrounding school security after a six-year-old shot his first grade teacher in Virginia earlier this month. What's being done to fix the problem? Our big traffic issue is on the far northeast side this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have more straight ahead.